Yar. Welcome on board, matey, to our fine pirate's delight of a game. Now prepare to dust off your worst possible accents and have an apple when you enjoy the game that is the pirate's form of sweet release in terms of building a land where they can live in glory forever and join their Libertalia. Yes, welcome to a swashbuckling delight of a game. Libertalia is a pirate game deluxe with gold and booty and plunder and terrible accents. Yeah. Um, yes, you are basically a captain in charge of a pirate crew and your job is to loot and plunder and basically gather all the riches you can because your days of pirating are coming to an end and it's time to think about retiring and buying a little island of your own somewhere to live out your end of days. So. The idea is that you have but three weeks to loot and plunder as much as you can and gain the riches of your choice so that you may retire in glory. Now, the three rounds of the game are all about putting out your pirate people and sending them out to basically capture various amounts of glorious treasure while avoiding being shot by Spanish officers, um, stabbing each other in the back or picking up cursed treasure because you don't want cursed treasure. Now, along the way, you'll be sending out your own crews. Now, the absolutely wonderful thing about this game is that everybody starts off with the exact same crew, although the exact crew you have varies from game to game. The difference is how you choose to play your crew to give you the best advantage. So while one person may play, for example, the barkeep on turn one, someone else might keep him until round three in order to basically use his own peculiar power of gain one doubloon. You get the idea. So there's a lot of strategy here. There's a lot of good honest pirating fun, of course, but in terms of when you use what and who you use what to which effect, that's when the genius really comes in. Now, you'll need to be taking risks. You'll need to be a little bit brave because there's a certain element that get revealed as you go along and you don't know always what's coming next. But that adds to the joy of the piratey fun. So without further ado, splice the main breaches, batten down the hatches and let's get to the table view. So before I forget to say, please subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, join us on Instagram, and basically just tag along on Twitter, really, because we'd love to have you on board. We're growing our social media presence bit by bit by bit, and every bit of support helps, so please check us out. Right, let's have a look at Libertalia. Libertalia is a brilliant pirate game. There is so much here in the wonderful thematics in terms of the great components and just the whole gameplay is just a bunch of fun, really. So, as we said, you are a glorious pirate captain. Perhaps you are Ignatius Bell with the ship The Queen's Fancy. Perhaps you are Dirk Chivers who pilots The Conquista. Or perhaps you are Slacky Jack. Because who wouldn't want to be Slacky Jack? Anyway, um, your ship is the Neptune and you will basically be sending out yourselves for piratey fun, glory and treasure like everybody else. Now, the great thing about this game is that everybody has their own deck of cards, numbered from 1 to 30. And everyone has the same deck of cards, numbered from 1 to 30. Now, you each have a set of characters that you'll be taking on board your missions. So... Everyone starts with a parrot. Everyone ends with the Spanish governor, for example. At the beginning of the game, you get dealt out a number of cards. So let's say, for example, um, quick shuffle this person. Let's say the cards that are dealt are number 12, number 9, number 14, number 21, our friend the parrot, number 1, and... 29, the captain. Well, every other player gets those specific cards out of their deck so that everybody starts playing with the same characters. And each round, you get more characters dealt out. You start off with nine characters dealt out, of which you will use six 
during the course of the game, because pirates, like all good God-fearing souls, don't go a-looting on Sundays. They stay home and have a rest. So, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, off you go. Sunday, pause, and then it's the second week, and then it's the third week, and then it's the end of the game. All is well so far. So if you've got nine characters to start off with, and you've used six of them, that means you'll have three to carry on to the next round. Of course, everyone will probably play slightly different characters, which means everyone's got different characters to take on to the next round, and so on and so on. So although you start off on the same footing, by the end of the game you will have completely different cards left, which is what makes each game unique and where the real strategy comes in. So, what is on offer? Well, each day, from your bag of booty tiles, you deal out tiles equal to the number of players. So say, for example, on a four-player game, you'll put up four tokens for each day. On a three-player game, like I've got here, you'll deal out three tokens, and then you reveal them. So what happens is on day one, what's available is some jewels worth three points. A sabre, which is useful for basically killing off rivals. And a cursed relic, which is worth minus three points. You really do not want to pick these up. On other days, we have a treasure map. Now, a treasure map by itself is not worth any points whatsoever. However, if you manage to collect three treasure maps, it's worth a mighty 12 doubloons. So that is kind of a little more of a long strategy risk. Now, as you can see here, there are actually three treasure maps available in this week, chosen randomly. So that is could be an option over the course of the week for you to pick up. Obviously, if there are only two treasure maps in, revealed in one week, well, you just can't make that happen. Um, other than that, we have just barrels of goods, just kind of one point each. You have casks of treasure, which are worth five points. And they're really the options available, which are detailed on each player's card, just in case you forget. OK, so as well as that, the way that the actual cards are resolved vary slightly differently. So, for example, on the first day, three points, a saber and a curse relic. It's not the choicest treasures in the world, but you might want to put somebody reasonably good at. So let's say, for example, that blue player, Slacky Jack, our friend here, decides to play um, the brute. So they place this face down in front of them. OK, and that's their play of the turn. So you can't actually see what the other players are playing. Now, the red player might, for example, decide to play. What else do we have? They might decide to play the captain. A bit of a foolish choice, but let's just go with it. Meanwhile, the black player may choose to play, play the carpenter, let's say. In fact, let's make this a bit more interesting. Let's imagine that they also decide to play the brute. Okay? So, when all players are ready, the cards are revealed. Here we go. Here's the reading party. Come to take your stuff. La 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 la. Ah, great. Now we organise those in terms of order, from lowest to highest. Now, as you can see, the problem here is that two characters have played the same card. However, there is a secondary number here, which is randomly dealt. So the blue player is 14, but a value of 2. And black player is 14, but a value of 4. So this one actually goes first in the order. And then up to the captain. Okay. So, what you then do is you resolve any special powers that people might have. Now, there are certain different powers. There are sunrise powers, day powers, dusk powers, night powers, and the day of rest, end of the week. So, let's just double check. Yes, there are some sunrise powers. So, during the day here, the Brute discards the character with the highest rank in the ship. Oh dear, let's have a look at that. I'm really sorry, Captain, but you've been kicked overboard. So Red is not collecting anything this turn, which is great. Now, unfortunately, the Black um, player is also discarding the character with the highest rank in the ship. The problem is, that's now them. Oh dear, the Black player's gone overboard as well, which means the Blue player is left to claim whichever booty they like. In this case, they will probably claim the jewels for three points. They might wish to claim a sabre, which lets them basically knock off one of the players, but since that's what they already did, they might just choose for some honest bit of pirating and get some loot. They then take this, and then they go home. The rest are discarded, and we go on to the next day. For example, if that had not occurred, and the brute and the captain were still there, let's say. Okay, let's imagine that those players 
were left there. From the right to the left, in other words, from the highest number down to the lowest number, the characters choose their value. So if it was still those two people left over, the captain will get first pick, and then it would be the brute. So the powers are resolved upwards, but they choose the booty from the lowest, so from highest down to lowest, and that's kind of a nice bit of balancing element in there. Right, and then you move on to day two, three, four, five, six, blah, 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 and off we go. But there are other powers as well, as well as the daytime powers that resolved first. There may be dusk powers. This is basically when the bounty is being collected. So let's see if we can find a character with a dusk power. So the cabin boy, for example, doesn't actually take any booty tiles. They're just kind of like a dummy player. Okay, so they basically go out, but they don't take anything. Now that can be useful for if they don't manage to pick up a cursed relic, or if they don't manage to get shot by a Spanish officer, for example. Any more useful things here? Let's have a look. Ooh, the cook, however, takes an extra bounty tile when loot is being divvied out, so he's extra very useful there. Okay, when they're all collected back in again, the loot's been collected, the people come back to the ship, and that's when you activate any nighttime powers. For example, the barkeep gains an extra doubloon. Presumably he's engaging a little bit of gambling back on the ship after hours. So that's that. Um, at the end of the week, when all the days have been resolved, then you basically have the day of rest powers. For example, the carpenter gains 10 doubloons. So with him, actually, the day he's played, he loses half his doubloons, but then at the end of the week, he gains 10 doubloons. So that's kind of a bit of a turnaround. And there's a huge, nice variety of different powers. For example, the monkey is absolutely brilliant because he passes on any cursed relics you've got, which would be worth minus three points each, to the player to the left of you, which basically means you can dump all your horrible scores. Okay? There are other special powers, things like um, one of our favourites is Granny Wata. Granny Wata, where is she here? Granny Wata is kind of the spirit of the ocean. Think Calypso. So basically, if you're the only player to play a copy of her on your turn, you basically gain two doubloons. However, if more than one player play her, they're all discarded. So it's kind of a bit of a reactionary play. Um, overall, there's a little bit of strategy, there's a little bit of reading involved. Obviously, the more you get to play the game, the more you get to know the characters and work kind of like, well, which ones are best played early on, which ones are best played later on. Um, but it's still a constant learning experience and it will actually support multiple longer plays. It really is good fun in terms of the more you play it, the more you learn. So when you collect all your tokens, you then trade them in for doubloons. For example, minus three, plus one, plus three, plus five, etc. And you receive those doubloons and move your pirate score around the track, trying to get up to 100 points, fantastically. So we have one doubloon, five doubloons, B Roman numerals, and of course, X, 10 doubloons, all right? Move your scores up, and at the beginning of each round, you reset each player to 10 doubloons, and then you can start again. So that's Libertalia, a really amazing game. Let's wrap things up with the final thoughts. Yar! Believe that order. So, 16 men on a dead man's chest, yo-ho-ho and a bottle of rum. Is this a game for you? Well, if you like um, card handling games, yes it could be. If you like strategy, yes, it could be. If you basically like the idea of kind of outwitting the other players, yes, it could be. Um, this isn't a game where you basically play your own element of the game. There is a certain amount of player versus player action. It's generally not exceptionally malevolent. There's a few cards that basically are literally out to get the other players, but overall, you can mostly play your own game with a major competitive element being who gets the best resources. Um, in terms of long-term strategy, Things like the maps become very, very important. Um, other than that, the sabres, basically you knock out other players and you may lose some of your own characters. But other than that, it kind of plays moment to moment to moment. So for people who are kind of like a mid-level mid interest strategy, this is a very good game for you. Um, the theme, of course, is utterly wonderful. There's basically doubloons everywhere. You have your own ships. It's a bunch of fun. Uh, the length is not too bad either. Generally, we get through a game of this in about 45 minutes, depending upon the number of players. 
but at the end of the game, everyone feels that they've accomplished quite a lot. And there's a few nice tricks and turns in terms of the end of round powers, and you're basically trying to find things are up and things are down. You get certain bonuses, for example, in terms of the players that you play that live, they go into your den, whereas the players that are knocked out go to your graveyard. Other way around, um, you get the idea, and you can get certain bonuses depending upon that. So there's lots of different abilities, different uh, actions, and every game will feel different. So replayability, very, very good. Theme, very, very good. Um, component quality, yeah, it's really, really nice. Uh, there's no really complaints here whatsoever. So Libertalia can be a very, very good fit for your table. Massive depth of strategy, not so much. Very, very light and simple, not so much. So it's a good, solid, mid-level game that you will hopefully have lots of good piratey fun enjoying. So that's about us for today. Thank you very much for joining us. Please, please, please follow, like, subscribe, etc. on social media. Please keep coming to us. Um, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram. We've got our webpage. You can contact me by email as ever. Please see the details at the end. We would love to hear from you, suggestions of games we can research next, or maybe some comments about what the, the type of games we've, we've looked at. Uh, if you'd like to see more heavy games, more light games, let us know. So, as ever, thank you for joining us on Rogue Reviews. And as for me, I'm off to eat an apple. Take care. Bye-bye.